Hello, welcome to Ball Street. It's Transfer Daily. I'm here with Ped to discuss the day's transfer happenings, and then, most importantly, because you you know you're the talent. Yeah. In this instance, um, of the channel, of the channel, uh, we're going to take some of your questions from Twitter. Uh, if you ever want to interact with people involved with the Ball Street shows like this and like Social Club at Ball Street on Twitter, get involved. Um, we'll come to that in due course, though, uh, Ped, some transfer news in general. Let's have a little discussion on it. A couple of things relating to Everton players, past and present, so let's delve in with that. James McCarthy. Mm. Um, now, Newcastle was strongly linked with him over the last week or so. There was talk of like 20-odd million pounds worth of bid going in. Palace now the latest team to be linked. Um, do you see that happening? Do you see him leaving the club before the window? Um, not unless we bring someone in. I think we need to bring someone in to repl to replace him or just to better him, basically. Um, yeah. Why should it not wait out for him and Everton? Because he, he looked good a couple of he seasons. He did look ago. good in his first season. And he he was a big part of the Martinez decline. But actually, Martinez pretty much played his part in the decline. He had a bad injury and didn't really handle it very well. And for one reason or another, he's just not come back the same player. Um, it doesn't. It's hard to define what he actually does on a football pitch. Yeah. Because his job... Is to get about and break things up, and he he, do, he doesn't seem mobile enough anymore. So it's 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 a strange one, but um, he will have suitors. You know, you mentioned Newcastle, Palace, Celtic, in very much interested now that they're in the Champions League and they've sure. got a bit of extra money. But the manager said he's got an injury and he's going to need an operation. So whether that scuppers any move, why would he why would he say that? Because he's injured. No, but why would you make? Why would you make that? Why would you? You know what I mean? Like you know, the manager. Yeah, I mean, you can keep it on the day. Well, he can't, didn't you? play. He didn't play on Saturday, yeah. so he was asked the question, "Where was he?" And he was because he's got an injury. Okay, fair enough. Uh, there was pictures of him in Glasgow actually on Saturday as well. Amazing. He looked all right. He looked fine. He looked fine. <laughs> um, so he wanted assurances. I think that he. Oh, there was talk of the weekend that he, he said, uh, uh, and he, you know, I'd like to move because. Um, for first team football, mm -hmm. having started all of the three games, sure. that so yeah. Um, but I don't think he, uh, maybe he doesn't bode well. He know he knows what's coming. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, I think it could happen, but I think we need to bring in replacement just because we're not massively strong in that area with Mo Bessage being off for probably the season as well with really? the injury. So. Would you be giggling your tits off if you got in the region of twenty million pound for James? McCarthy? Not really, no, On, because just by what the market seems to be throwing up. Um, twenty million probably seems about. Some lunatics played twenty five million for Yannick Balassi. We paid sixteen for him, so twenty. Yeah, twenty wouldn't be, a, you know, with with the way everything's gone. Sure. Twenty yeah. would, and if there is, if there is more than one club after him, yeah, then no, absolutely. There you go. Well, more than that, I'm sure on over on Toffee oh, TV when it develops. Constantly talking about James McCarthy. <laughs> uh, one that you highlighted to me before we started, mate, Callum Chambers. Yeah, what's going on with him? Going to Middlesbrough. On loan? Bit. On loan. Nobody wants to Thrilling go story. Nobody wants to go. That's a mad one for me, though, because they've got they've bought that um, the, the kid in who played centre out of Holden, is it? Yeah. Um, and, you know, Chambers is, is there. It's a couple of seasons. He's not kicked on. It's not like Wenger's ever been shy of playing kids, but mm. that, can't, that can't bode well for his Arsenal career. If he, I mean, I, I know, a Premier League loan's fine, I guess, but... I would say his performance against Liverpool in the first game of the season was more more of a highlight of more, his Arsenal career, yeah, yeah. more damning for his Arsenal career. So it, it hasn't really worked, has it? He hasn't really kicked on. I remember when he went to Southampton, from Southampton and it was a, it, Stones had just broken into our team and there was this big, who's going to make it, who's better? One's just gone to Man City for nearly £50 million, the other one's gone to Middlesbrough on loan. So... I think that answers that question. <laughs> but at the same time, he is a good he is a good player. He just probably just needs games yeah. under the belt and just just getting in there. Maybe it's 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 one of them, isn't he? He's left Southampton quite early in his career, and yeah. it's it, it's sort of well, it is. It's sink or swim, isn't it? For a lot of these players, you you, know, you look at someone like um, the Ox as well. Uh, you look at him and you think maybe he could have done with a year out on loan somewhere as well, yeah. rather than just sitting and on the bench and coming on. Not, yeah, you know, no, I agree with that actually. It's it, it, the county was my one because you know, if as much as he didn't have a great performance against Liverpool this season, last season they had a similar injury crisis at the back when we played them. At, uh, we played them at the Emirates, and he had, he had a really good game, all told. So, uh, Arsenal fans, you know, doubtless you'd be watching the news droves. Let us know your thoughts on that. Would you be 
I don't know. Upset? Would you do you think that's the beginning of the end of his of his Arsenal career if he does move on loan? Can he can he do enough whilst out on loan to come back? And, and where would you see him playing? You know, is he a centre? Is he is he actually a centre half, or would you see him playing a, a full back and what have you? Um, Loic Remy. This one's been mentioned over the weekend. Lo, on loan to Palace. Mm. It, this is a classic transfer window. Last few days, isn't it? Sort of set up. Who's still, who's still available? Who's still available and who's desperate? And it is just like you could be in the Sky Sports office and you could just be like mashing them all up and throwing up and see who pop, you know, who comes up. It's it, you know, Remy, he'll go there and he'll play two games and he'll probably score a couple of goals and then he'll get injured. Yeah, because that, that's just the way it is. Um, but it, it is very much just like who's available, who needs a club. Let's put them together. It's a solid thing for, for Palace, though. I mean, like, because let's face it, prior to signing Benteke, I think we were looking at looking at their attacking options and look, Connor Wickham's not. He's fine. He had a little. He had that little purple patch on the back end mm. of last season. Went okay, yeah. He's got a bit of talent. Yeah. He's not lived up to to the hype that he had a few seasons ago. He's clearly not the goals that you would require to finish in the top t- top half table. Definitely, maybe even you know for to stave off relegation. They're going up Benteke, but that's. That's it. Remy, if nothing else, is a. It's got all the hallmarks of like a shrewd piece of business. You know, he's on. Mm. He's on loan. When he is fit, he does score goals. You're right in saying that, that, that whether he stays fit is another another matter altogether. But all of a sudden, in the space of like a week and a half, two weeks, Palace have gone from having no attack whatsoever to all of a sudden. I, I, I don't know what, what do you reckon. Connor Wick and Ben Teke and Remy at least as your options. You'd as a Palace fan, you'd probably feel a little bit more relaxed about the thing. Scott Dano out score all three. <laughs> Definitely. No, you well, he's well yeah. on his way, isn't he? <laughs> For, it, it's classic. It is though. It's classic transfer window um, fodder. This, you, you, it, it, that's a very easy deal to do for both sides. Chelsea get a player off the books. Palace get one in. Probably go arse on the wages. The lad doesn't have to move. You know he. Yeah. It, that's it, isn't it? That's the top and bottom of it. He's playing football, and, and that's that's it. It, it. These things just, I suppose that being a London club, you can sort of facilitate that kind of thing. Yeah. This week, it's very probably very very easy to do. Um, but he really will go. Uber are going to be in a fortune, aren't they, over the uh, <laughs> over the next couple of days? Yeah, he, he'll go there, and and he'll he, he really will have, he'll have a good start, and then and then he'll break down, like so, not, not mentally, just so probably, like, probably his knee. Who knows? Um, Jonathan Lescott's moved on a free transfer to AK Athens. Mm. Uh, what's interesting, they put a post on it on social media that listed his, his like, career successes. It listed his Premier League record. Mm. So, uh, 286 appearances in the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, 23 goals. Most done for us. Nine assists. He's kept 100 clean sheets in that time as well. well. Yeah, single-handedly. Ah, like that, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Are you surprised that no one better than, well, Pescara were in for him as well? It was Serie A team um, or AK Athens. I mean, he's 34 years old, mm. but his career has taken a huge nosedive in the last couple of years, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm just, Are you asked? I'm just one. I'm, I'm asked about the Greek economy. I'm wondering how they're paying for this. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I feel like they're gonna have to have a, a whole new deficit. Yeah. Just for his wages. Well, it's not like they pay the the, the utility bills over there anyway. So they're probably say the clubs are probably saving a few bob. Keep the lights on all day. Keep the floodlights on. You don't, have to, don't bother paying for it anyway. Um, yeah. No. That's that is a, is, a, is a valid point to some extent. But when you consider the, the, the clubs that would be looking out in the at least the bottom end of the Premier League, or is it just that look? As, it happens with footballers, and you saw all the, the shit with him at the end of the season when he's tweeting pictures of his car yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Is it just that he's had, he's had too much for too long, and maybe the hunger to to to, to be at the top level, Villa maybe was. We saw him at his new level at, at Aston Villa. To last be season. honest, I think I don't th- I don't think that's strictly true. I just think he's lost his pace, and when he's lost his play, pace, he's found he's he's not. That good. He's not that good. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, he, don't get me wrong. When he played for us, he was brilliant. I, yeah. I was devastated. I was more devastated when we lost him than when we lost John Stones. Yeah. Because he was a genuine threat. I mean, I think he scored like eleven or twelve for us one season. Um, he scored. I think he scored against you, Cop End, and you know, no, just like he, he had an amazing season. Um, he, he was a brilliant defender. He could cover the ground really, really quick. He was, you know. 
played Jagiel could do were brilliant. But I think at some point he's that inj- he had a re- like we got him on the cheap because he had a really bad knee injury. Yeah. Like and and the people a lot of people said he couldn't he wouldn't play that long. And maybe that's caught up with him. He's lost his pace, and he's not one of those defenders that can use his brain who can yeah. play on. And he and like a Richard done. Yeah. Or a Richard, Richard Goff more like <laughs> the legend that is Richard Goff. Um, and yeah, he's just he's just he's just bombed, hasn't he? Through to cut down and listen, AK are probably just buying him for his, you know, for his Star for the power. name alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? For his, for his bring, advertising, he'll bring them in. For his, if they, I wonder if they've got a decent car partnership. Oh. The advertising potential is uh, is extraordinary. He did, but he's possessed. <laughs> uh, so the biggest transfer, I say, news story, whatever you're doing the rounds right now. Um, apparently, Chelsea have had a bid rejected for Rodriguez. They're looking for in the region of sixty million pounds. Now, if there's a club liable to do that, mm. it's it's a, it's a it's a very Chelsea sort of move, that isn't it? It's a very Newcastle move. <laughs> That's a very Newcastle, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That 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 also. I think he's to be fair to him. Yeah. He's probably a, a, a caliber above. They'd call him if you went to Newcastle. They'd want to call him James. Yeah, wouldn't he? James. Yeah. All right, James. Rod, Rod, James Roddy or something. Yeah. yeah. So, um, in, I don't know. He, he's a weird one, this kid, because he's he's obviously got talent. He's amazing, Pat. He is. Yeah, he's amazing. yeah. I know. I was, but I'm saying he's obviously got talent. He had an amazing World Cup a couple of years ago. They Real Madrid have gone. Colombian player, amazing. Sell some shirts, that which is what they typically do yeah. at Real Madrid. They don't go. Where's he gonna play? Didn't see them buying Faustino Asprilla, mate. Well, you know, but they don't go. <laughs> they don't, you know, it's why they bought. Um, it's why they bought Hernandez, isn't it? You know, the, for the Mexican market. <laughs> they, they, that's what they do, though. You know, they go. That's why they bought. That's why they bought Jonathan Woodgate. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thomas Gavison. <laughs> for they, the T-shirt market. They look markets, at the markets yeah. and think, right, we are, we are, we are big in Denmark. We need to start hit the demographics in Denmark yeah, by Thomas Garbus. Absolutely. But they, that's what they do. They go, right, we, hang on, where's he going to play? We've already got 18 players there. and gone. And that's bait. I think he had an injury in his first season, yeah. well, which set him back. It's, I think he's got like a one in four goal scoring record. I think he's got like 20 odd goals and 80 mm-hmm. something appearances, which is pretty great, all yeah. told. But, you know, uh, it's no disgrace not to be amazing in that Real Madrid team. I feel like top players have to almost just go. And dip the toe in at Real Madrid and Barcelona just to just to see. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, it's not actually a disgrace because you've seen players like um, Zlatan go to Barcelona and yeah. not work out. You know, you've you, you've seen plenty of players. You know, look at someone like Michael Owen. Yeah. You know, he went to he went to Real Madrid, and if a few things had just dropped in for him, um, he could have been a really big success there. Yeah. But he bottled in and, and jumped ship and went to Newcastle. That's not quite what happened, but well, not that I'm not that I'm going to dedicate any time to defending no, Michael Owen. You know what. But the thing is, but, you're right. I think there's that. It's kind of like I guess it's like you, you, when you come from come from a sleepy town, crossing the road to all of a sudden crossing the road, crossing a motorway. Mm. You probably go, yeah, yikes, that's a bit. You know what I mean? That's a that's a bit much. But I think for the far as I'm concerned, look at look at Alexis Sanchez and I'll get a bit in a Barcelona. The guy's a phenomenal footballer. But again, there's no disgrace to not being one of the three best players <laughs> in a club like Barcelona or Real Madrid. Yeah. That he's 25 years old. He's a he is a tremendous player. His best years are still ahead. Of him, I would. If Liverpool had sixty million to spare, I'd be like orgasmic if we were to pick up someone like him. And look, you would be the same. Oh, I think he's a brilliant player. As I say, I just think uh, everyone, every every player is gonna if they get the chance to go to someone like Real Madrid, they're gonna go for it. Now, you know, good example you just mentioned there, Sanchez. Sometimes those players get to an age where it's like, do you know what? Actually, I want to be. The big, the big fish, rather than yeah. you know, they want to, they want to get there and go. Well, actually, I've had a couple of years here. It's not all it's made out to be when you're not playing footy. I want to go and play somewhere where I'm the number ten or whatever, and and I'm the team's built around me. And there's yeah. no, there's, there's no disgrace in that whatsoever. Be- yeah. And also, if you're in there, you probably start to understand how things actually do work as yeah. well, because marketing does have a big part in it. Real Madrid, they have done for years. I think it's probably one of the only first summers they haven't done it. They'll go and just pick the, one of the hottest talents from around the world, and then worry about where it all fits in. Yeah, absolutely. And they all, and it's, and it is all about marketing and set, you know, selling shirts and all that kind of thing. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It's, it has actually worked in the last few years. Yeah. It, the mad thing was in the Galactico area, era when they had all the best players, it didn't seem to work, and that seemed to put them off, off the, the idea. But it seem, it's seeming to work now. They've won two Champions Leagues in the last three years, so um, players like. You know, players like him and players like probably Isco. Yeah. 
are going to have to find other clubs now. Yeah, great. Liverpool would be lovely, but Chelsea. I, it would annoy me if he ended up at Chelsea because it's. I mean, it's. It, I think it's a testament to the league when you're getting players like getting players of that mm. quality coming in. It's no longer a case of like getting him when he's 31, 32, yeah. and looking for one last last payday, or whatever. He, he would definitely improve the quality. Um, okay, we asked you for your questions to Ped Everton related on the Ball Street Twitter, which is at Ball Street. If you're not following already, go and get involved. Um, are you ready for this? I'm always ready. Primed. Okay. S- uh, s- oh yeah. Okay. Let's start with this one. Uh, <laughs> at Rushy Twenty One underscore. I'm not. I, I, I guess he's an Everton fan. Is that a picture of a? I don't know what his profile picture is. I don't want to investigate further. There's a lot of topless man on there. Um, he says Nias or Magidi. For create for, your own context. Um. Right, Niasso Magidi for cleaning out my car. Um, I'm probably going to have to go for Magidi because he's a little bit smaller. Yeah. He's got little hands, <laughs> Trump-sized hands. Nias could I've, get like a, a, a wrist injury that might put him exactly, out. Exactly, you know, you wouldn't want to deal with that kind of insurance claim. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm covered. Magidi could get in all the little spots and just with his little his little wee hands and, and, <laughs> and, and, and clean it all out. Um, if you're asking about football, nah. Uh, Magidi's got a spin. Yeah, McGeady's got something named after him, but Nias has definitely got something named after him as well. Probably a car park somewhere or a roundabout <laughs> so, in Russia. Uh, at Superstech22 asks, do you think we'll make a marquee signing before Wednesday? Um, we haven't got a marquee. We sold it. It used to be in the park end, if you remember rightly. But we actually sold the marquee, so... I don't think that's allowed anymore. Don't market like like you, you have a, a summer a rainy summer barbecue. Yeah, we you? actually used to have a marquee. That was where we used to hold all our uh, like a, t- a sideless tent. Hospitality was in our tent. Nice. <laughs> Everton football club, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, we, big signings though. Big. I. Do you know what? I think there could be one more, but who it is, I don't know. It's it's hard to get these things done in the last few days, isn't it? Because there's that much sort of paperwork and, and all that nonsense. Bro. Roman Raquel, me. I, th- I think the days of Raquel <laughs> might just have gone now. Um, Any inklings on anything, though? I mean, I, I heard the last day was the, 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 the Hart thing. Everton weren't, in, weren't interested in Hart. Yeah. But does anyone that you've heard sneaky that might I, no, be it's, it's, I will be honest with you, right? And this is not just a, this is not a cop-out. Everton are playing things very, very close to the chest this year. They've... Um, they sort of move things away from Liverpool, where you know, there's a, where everyone talks to everyone, and move them down to like Machiri's office in London, where like he can he can control, and and you don't hear about much till it sort of gets to the latter stages. But I I think I think he will go for maybe two or three, um, and hope that one one stick. Yeah, I don't know. About, um, I I suppose it's if anything drops in if. If, you know, you get to the last day and suddenly Mourinho goes Qu- quick, push Matt out the door now, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, you might get one in, but there's n- there's no real from my from my understanding, there's no sort of real big name at the moment. I think they're desperately trying to get a striker. We're getting linked with this uh, the lad from Italy, but I've, I've heard there might be two or three on the table. It's just a case of other things just dropping into yeah. place. Well, it's inter- interesting that you mentioned the name because Tom Simpson at Tom uh, Mufc Eight. Said, did you really think Everton were going to sign Matter and then did some kind of pull tongue winky face? Yeah, I, I honestly felt like we had a chance to get Matter. I don't understand, don't see why that would that would be a outside stretch. the realms of yeah, yeah. The, the lad, the lad, from all we from all we knew of past history, the lad wasn't going to survive at Manchester United, and he still might not survive yeah, at absolutely. Manchester United. Or well, that's something that might come back in 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 um, in January. Yeah. But you look at that midfield and you think. Look at look at his bench in the last couple of games. You know, look at look at who's playing and who's not playing. He look at the fact that Fellaini is playing in the Manchester United team. He, it's clear what he like what he likes. He likes having a midfield of strong players who get who get in and 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 that's how he started. So it's all right, it matter having a game here and a game here now. But give it a month or two, we mightn't be anywhere near the team. So yeah. We'll wait and see on that one. Okay. What do you make of Kuman's second or third choice keeper comments? Playing down heart, but still interested. Asks real Dale Trump. Um, I think he just wants another goalie, but does he? Can he be asked with with the heart? You know, if he gets heart, then suddenly he's got he's going to have a circus around. Yeah. Heart has to play 
heart playing for England. What he probably wants is thinking, right, I'll get another good goalie in who will push Stecklenburg. What it probably does mean is Robles will go probably either on, probably go to on loan somewhere mm -hmm. in Spain on the last day. And he'll probably try and get someone in who's a solid number two. Yeah. Um, <laughs> solid number two. E, five, five <laughs> kids. Five. Uh, he'll probably, get, probably look for an, a, a, you know, a solid goalkeeper to, as, as backup rather than. And that's probably what he's thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Liam Jerome 150 says, Do you think we need a stri another striker? Because I do. I think we need two strikers. I think we need, I think we need a target man, a proper target man. And I think we need. When you say that though, do you like as in to start or the way that like Dunk was toward the end of his, his career where, you know, for your mm. last 15 minutes kind of thing, he's, he's thrown on as a plan B? I don't care. Like, no, what I mean is, <laughs> I don't care about names and individuals. People get hung up about, well, oh, you've got to play him because he's, it's so and so. I don't care. Yeah. I, it, for me, it's, you need three or four strikers or three or four players. What, you know, two for every position to challenge each other, and I, and if we we need a target man and we need a runner as well, someone who will run behind teams and get mm -hmm. and 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 run into the channels. So I I think you need you need like a you need you need different kinds of options. You you look at all the best teams over the last few years. Their striking options have been different kinds, different types, not just the same. If you bring take one off, you bring one a different one on. You're changing the way you play and you're making the other team think about how you play. I think that's what we what we need. What we've got at the moment is we've got one striker in Lukaku who is a little bit of all of them, but he's not very good at, at, at any of them. He's not he's not a brilliant target man. He's not he's not a brilliant runner. Um, he's quite good at putting the ball in the back of the net. I think he's better than quite good to be fair. But go on. Hasn't scored in Premier League. Well, hasn't scored a goal for twelve games for us. So you can understand the frustration. Um, so you need different kinds of strikers. So I'd like to see us buy someone with a little bit of pace and also a tag man. Because what I've seen from Balassi in his first two games is he, he's a tremendous cross of the ball, but there's never anyone at the end of it. So yeah. you just think if you add someone you could bring on and or, or someone to start games in certain instances, then he'd, he'd you know he'd weigh in with he'd weigh in with a few goals. Okay, uh, Paul Stevens at Pabs Twenty Five. Do you think we've been done over by Arsenal in the Perez saga? Oh. If they've got, if they've looked at us and gone, he must be good because Steve Walsh is is scouting them. Then we have been, but there's nothing to say that they weren't tracking them as well. Yeah. And they've gone, yeah, mate, it's Champions League football, and you'll probably pl play. I feel that like Arsene Wenger and Arsenal are a bit like you used to, when you you see that when you first go to town and you're a bit nervous and you didn't know how to approach a girl, but you see a girl get copping off with another lad, and you're like, well, at least you know she's up for that kind of action on the night. And I feel like that's how Arsenal conduct the transfer business is they don't know how to complete yeah. it at, at, at bids for strikers. So unless they know they've got, unless they know it's a set, mm. I, I with like a, a minimum fee release clause that kind of thing. Look, they tried it with Suarez, they tried it with Vardy, and. Now they kind of go, we don't really know what to do now that's falling apart. Ooh, Everton have had a bid accepted <laughs> for this guy. Well, we know that we can get a bid yeah. accceptance for that price. So I think in that regard, it, you, you probably be a, uh, Everton will probably feel a little bit wound up by that. But I don't think I don't think you're wrong in that when you put the two clubs side by side and you know. No, but you can't yeah. argue, can you? He's been offered Champions League football. It might have been offered, I don't know what he's been offered, it might have been offered better ways. It might even have come down to the lad. The, you know, uh, it's it's just that's just modern day football, isn't yeah. it? If you're offered Champions League football, you're gonna take it. And and what can you say? There's very little you can say. You, all you can do is improve your situation and try and get in the same position as that other club. Yeah. Stephen Bickerstaff asks, can we finish top four this season? No. 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 I, I don't. I don't. I think. I think we could, but I don't think we will because. I just I just look at how strong Man United have started, mm -hmm. how strong Man City have started, how strong Chelsea have started. They've gone under the radar a little bit, and then you just think there's a possibility we could fight it out with other clubs for that for that fourth place, which is obviously obviously where we want to be. Yeah. But I I think that it's been a great start for us, but I think there's there's still going to be ups and downs. Um, I think we've got the the right manager, and I think we're going the right way, and I think. Everything I've seen so far is really, really positive. But I, I, I just look at the squad and I just think 
take Garner. I just think if you lost, if we lost him for a few games, you think who'd replace him? Yeah. If you lost Lukaku at this point, even though he hasn't scored, you think well, there's nobody else but Coney. That's 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 where that's where finishing top. That's that's where you need a, a really yeah. good squad. So if you ask me that in four days' time, and we've signed. X, Y, and Z, and they're all brilliant. And suddenly you look at the squad and go, "Oh my God, there's options everywhere." Then maybe I'd say, "Yeah," but just right now, I yeah. don't think our squad's good enough. Okay. And 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 it's all and it's okay saying, "Well, we haven't, we haven't got Europe, we haven't got this, and we haven't got that." Chelsea haven't got the distraction. Liverpool haven't got the distraction of Europe. It it is all about having that bigger and better squad. Sure. And I just think we're weak in a few places that could become key during the season. Okay, Sean, well, I think that leads quite nicely in. Um, I say a few days left of the transfer window. Deadline day live coming up on Wednesday. Ped's going to be there. I'm going to be there. It's going to be a nine-hour deadline day extravaganza. Will Everton bring in the positions and the players in those positions that, that, that Ped's already detailed? Um, you'll have to watch the show and find out. I mean, you could find it elsewhere. <laughs> it's going to be all over Twitter. But, you know, fuck that. Are you going to be entertained yeah. while you're doing it? You know what, maybe, because you might have another tab open with some porn or something, I don't know, or the telly on. and you put, It's irrelevant. Another very good way of being entertained on deadline day. Arguably the best. Truly, not arguably. It will be the best. We'll make it the best, won't we? The only other thing I could think would be more entertaining is, I noticed that one of the presenters of a 24-hour sports news channel is pregnant. So if she drops... That could be entertaining. I mean, I'll be honest, if that happens... But you know what we'll do? We'll report on that. But if that happens, I'm going, I'm just stopping. <laughs> and I'm just going to watch. Because I feel like that could be really good. That could well and be. And I don't think like we've got the capacity in this room to, to do that. If anyone is pregnant and looking to drop on Wednesday the come 31st, in here. please do come we've, in. Please get in touch at Ball Street on Twitter or in the comments below. And we'll we've see got if we can loads of, fair out. We've got loads of hot water and towels. The, yeah, I absolutely. don't even know what they do. I don't know what their purpose are. I've, I've seen two children birthed in front of me. I, I still don't... I didn't see any of that, any of that shit. I'm not a gynecologist, but... I won't do the joke. That's... Okay, don't. That's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, if you haven't already, subscribe to the Ball Street YouTube channel. You can click the annotation link in the corner of the screen, which I'm sure will be turned on on this one this time. Um, and um, yeah, and, uh, and get involved. We'll be here, as I say, nine hours live on Deadline Day, all the way to the window closing, bringing you all the latest news and having some fun while we do it as well. Um, thanks very much, Ped. Thanks very much for joining me. All right. Yeah, cheers. And uh, of course, obviously, go and check out Social Club tonight as well.